What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Gotham Season 3, Episode 18, Light the Wick. So, this one was interesting in some ways, but in other ways, it wasn't one of the best ones recently. Like, honestly, I've really enjoyed most of this season. You know, it's been very well done, the Mad Hatter was enjoyable, the Court of Owls has been fairly mysterious and kind of in the background. And so now the fact that they're getting kind of the center stage has been fun. It's been enjoyable to watch, have Jim go through all of this, you know, seeing his uncle be a part of the Court of Owls and trying to deal with that. Even the side stories, which in the first couple seasons have been sort of side stories to where they don't really connect to anything. This season it's been the main story and all the side stories are actually connected to the main story. But this one, even though they are still kind of connected, it just doesn't feel that way. It feels like the jumping around and the, the cutting from one scene to the next doesn't really connect very well. And so it feels like we're still in, you know, in the middle of a scene almost. You know, it's not quite it, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel like the cutting in this one was very clean. It didn't feel like, oh, we've gone through this scene and it's done and now we move on to the next one. It felt like it just sort of cut to the scene and it's done. Cut to the scene, done. Cut to that scene, done. And it's just very back and forth, very short, short-lived scenes in general. So, first of all, let's talk about the shortest of all the, the side stories in this one, which is Selena's story. In the last episode, she got pushed out a window, fell to her death. But then we find out, apparently, she's in the hospital. She is not doing well, but she somehow survived. But the doctor's saying, for right now, it's not looking good. So, Ivy goes to check on her and gets all this information from the doctor. She's like, no. The doctors here can't do what I can do. Brings all these plants in, and somehow Selena comes back to life. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how they're going to explain that, or if they are at all. They're just going to say, oh yeah, she just made it. But yeah, she's back alive, and then, of course, she stands up out of bed. She's ripping all the stuff off. And I was like, where are you going? You just came out of a coma. And, of course, she delivers kind of a badass line. She's like, I need to go kill somebody. <laughs> just... I don't know, I really do like the girl playing Selena. She does a very good job with this character. Um, so that line was just, it was pitch perfect. On to the other, I guess the other side story in this one was a bit of a Lee's story. It has to do with what, you know, everything that's been going on with Jim. I, I don't know how to feel about Lee. Because at first, when she was first introduced, her character was great. She and Jim hit it off. It felt like they really had a good connection, and the relationship they built felt natural. And I'm just like, this is awesome. You know, it's it feels like a natural relationship. It feels like they really are working together well. And it just, it felt right. And then last season happened, and he pushed her out of his life. She had to go work on Deadpool, so she had to leave the show. And so they had to come up with some reason why she wasn't involved. And so Jim goes to prison. It turns out she was pregnant, but then lost the baby while he was in prison. He wasn't able to see her. And so then she found another man, and then this season, everything that happened with him, you know, with the Mad Hatter, he gets infected with Alice's blood, and so he goes crazy, he's about to kill her, so Jim kills him instead. And ever since then, I just, she hasn't been the same. I haven't enjoyed her on the show. Her only purpose, it feels like, to be on the show is to be mad at Jim, or that's it. And of course, at one point, it was she was trying to have Jim killed by Falcone, but Honestly, since everything that happened with Mario, even before then, even when she was with Mario, it still felt like the only purpose for her to be on here was to antagonize Jim. And so we see more of that in this episode. Just more of the, what, Harvey, you need to come look into this. You know, I think his uncle's, his uncle's death was a murder, even though everything points to a suicide. I think he murdered him, or at least covered up the murder, or did something, and just... I don't know, it, it feels like you have no idea what's going on, you just assume because you hate Jim that immediately he's doing something bad, and while he kind of is, at the same time he's doing it for a good reason. You know, the cover-up of the, the uncle's death, why he died, why he committed suicide, yeah, he covered it up, but there's a reason behind it. He's trying to stop this evil group from destroying the city, but you don't know any of that, so you're just walking in here thinking you know everything, thinking that he had something to do with his uncle's death, thinking that he's doing something that's hurting other people, and that he's going to hurt other people if he doesn't get stopped, and, oh, Lucius, is, are you helping him too? Has he pulled you into his wanton destruction? 
it just feels like she prattles on and on and on about how evil Jim is when she has no clue at all what's going on. So I don't know. It's just it's getting old at this at the end of the episode. She's talking to Jim and it sounds like she's she's saying goodbye like forever, like she's done, she's leaving. I honestly kind of want her to at this point. Like I just I want her to leave. I'm I was worried Jim was gonna like stop her, and be like, look, I'll explain everything. But he, when he did, he kind of explained certain things, but he didn't explain what he was doing at that moment with the Court of Owls. He explained, you know, yes, I killed Mario, but he was infected, he was trying to kill you, I've gotten over that. And pretty much just told her off, you know, you asked me how I could get over it so easily, now you know. And so, I, I, I don't really know, that was kind of cryptic, I kind of get what he's saying, but at the same time, it is a little bit mysterious. But she walks out with a box of her stuff, so maybe she's done for good. I doubt it. I, I feel like she's going to have some sort of conclusion if she is leaving the show permanently. Or she's either either she's going to leave permanently and there's going to be some sort of resolution there. Or she's going to get back with Jim. I don't know which one it's going to be. But for the moment, I wouldn't mind if maybe she just wasn't in the show for the next couple episodes. So those are pretty much the two side stories. The rest of it, though, was all pretty much main story for this one. Uh, it's all pretty much about Jim and Bruce. They're, they're two differing sides of dealing with the Court of Owls slash possibly League of Assassins. And then Penguin's involved as well. Um, it all connects. And this is like the pretty much the main plot going on. But like I said, it didn't feel like it connected. Like it would just... One moment we're sitting here with Jim in the middle of some sort of ballroom where people are in danger. And all of a sudden cut, we're away with Bruce training. And they cut, we're with Ivy and Selena's room. And they cut... Or with Penguin and he's talking to somebody and just, I don't know, they need to sort of make it flow a bit more to where we see the progression. And the biggest example of that is we see Bruce training in this episode. He's fighting some guy, uh, the guy that's teaching him, I don't know, I don't think they've introduced him yet still. Uh, I'm assuming he's not going to be Ra's al Ghul because he seems a bit too old to be Ra's unless maybe he's going to end up in the Lazarus Pit and be reborn younger. Um, <clears throat> but this guy is training him. And we see that, and he's getting better, and he's fighting better. But the problem is, because these cuts are happening so randomly, I don't know if time is passing or if this is still the same day. You know, did Bruce get that much better, like, from that morning to that night? Or is this over maybe a, a couple days or a week, possibly, that he's improving slowly? So I hope they sort of give us some sort of idea of how much time has passed. Because at the moment, I don't know how much time has passed for Bruce. I don't know if he's been there for weeks or days or even months. Because that's not something they've done very well, that, that passage of time. They don't really ever tell us, okay, how much time has passed between each episode, how much time has passed since we got this information to when we're staking this place out, to when we're executing this plan or whatever. Um, so that is something that they need to look at improving a bit more uh, going forward into the final episodes. But we also see uh, Penguin... After everything that's happened, you know, he's got his little band together. Obviously, Ivy's treating with Selena, so we don't see her involved with Penguin this time. But he's got uh, Bridget with him. I don't know where Mr. Freeze is. I assume he's somewhere doing something. Uh, but, yeah, he's not a part of this episode. So it's just Penguin and uh, Firefly. That's her name. I can't remember what she's called. But... He's asking Jim about what's going on because he sees, after what happened with Nigma, he thinks that Jim knows something about what's going on. And so Jim just kind of tells him, you know, look, the Court of Owls are not to be trifled with. But then later on in the episode, there comes a moment where Jim, the Court of Owls is trying to test this Alex, Alex, uh, Alice's blood inside this big ballroom. And apparently it has all of like the, the high class people in Gotham. And so they're trying to test it out here to sort of make a statement that they're about to take control of the city. And so, of course, Jim doesn't want that to happen, but he has to try it. He's trying to do it in such a way to where it doesn't look like he's the one responsible. But as we come to find out, you know, he just, he's not able to do it. And so he's like, screw this. Starts fighting the guy that's there, uh, supposed to be watching him and executing him if he ever tries to do anything to stop the bomb. But he manages to dial Penguin to get him to where he's supposed to be. I do have to wonder though, was he actually able to make it to the to the bank that they were at? Was he actually able to make it in 15 minutes? 
Because I don't know, it just... It seemed way too coincidental they showed up just in the nick of time. But anyway, there's a little bit of a fight scene. Jim manages to fight off the guy until Penguin shows up. Bridget shoots fire at him, knocks him out of the window, kills him. And then they manage to evacuate everybody out before Alice's blood gets spread around the room. So that's pretty much all that happens there with the, the blood in the ballroom. But it kind of sets up that now Catherine knows that Jim has betrayed her. And so that's where it's going. But the very interesting thing that I'm looking forward to seeing in the next couple episodes is we see uh, Catherine asks Hugo Strange to get Barnes from the <clears throat> from the asylum so they can get Alice's blood out of him and use him use it as sort of a, a weaponized gas. And so Strange manages to do that. Um, he also kind of helps Jim in the same way. So. Once again, he's just playing both sides. He just whichever side is going to keep him alive, that's the side he's going to go towards. So he he helps Jim to find out what they're doing with Tetch's blood. <clears throat> and so, but what we see at the end, after everything that happens, after the ballroom scene, after you know stopping the the blood from being released, obviously one of the big moments was seeing Barnes in his crazed state again, uh, escaping. They're trying to escape, you know, knocking some guards aside, stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's he's one of the he's like the main Court of Owls assassin guy, the one that fought off the people at the dock, uh, barbarous people. He shows up so he can take uh, Barnes in, and so he manages to get him in. That's how they get the blood out. But by the end of the episode, we see Catherine is talking to Barnes and saying, you know, look, we're trying to cure the city, but Jim Gordon wants to stop that and so he busts out of the chair he's got like this super strength and nothing can seem to hold him and it kind of makes me wonder like you saw that he was able to break away from his chains inside of the prison wouldn't that make you think maybe chain him down a bit stronger but whatever he manages to break out of the chains they held him down on rips off his mask he's like Jim Gordon will die or Jim Gordon is guilty and I will be his executioner and so it sets up for probably the next episode and I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to handle this I'd love to see just a bit more of Barnes being crazy you know that I, I don't know just something about that thought of Captain Barnes the the upstanding cop the one that wasn't going to let anything bad happen now all of a sudden he's kind of crazy and he's lost he's lost his mind and now he wants to kill a ton of people I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that I mean it's definitely an interesting concept I love what they did with it when they first started with it and so now I'm looking forward to seeing, I guess, that I guess that showdown between Jim and Barnes. It's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to handle it, if they're going to be able to cure him of his Tetch's disease or whatever. I'm assuming that Lucius and possibly Lee will be responsible for coming up with a cure for it. But as it stands, I am looking forward to next episode, but I hope that they sort of, I guess, just organize the, the scenes a little bit more. Like... I, I think something they could pro possibly do is instead of having it to where you have all these side stories that you're trying to continue episode after episode, like, you know, the Selena stuff, last episode it was maybe five minutes out of it, this one maybe five minutes out of it. Instead of doing that, maybe have it to where these side stories get this episode, and then not this one, but then this one. So that way, these two episodes that have had five minutes of Selena cameoing, Maybe turn it into 10 minutes in one episode and then she doesn't show up for one. You know, I just feel like it would organize it a bit more instead of showing little snippets every now and then. Because it just cuts away too much. It feels like it cuts off from the flow of the episode in general. So, that's my only complaint about it. The rest of it is still enjoyable. still a lot of fun. Still looking forward to seeing where the story is going to go next. How they're going to be able to stop the Court of Owls. Because honestly at this point they almost feel like they're unbeatable like there's no way that they can possibly stop them because every single time they try to do something to stop them every single time they try to just figure out what to do next it feels like they just keep getting cut off at every turn like oh I've got an idea idea gets cut off <laughs> and I don't know with with Bruce returning soon which it sounds like uh, the, the guy that was talking to Catherine at the end he it made it sound like that he had trained Bruce to be ready, and so now he is ready uh, to come back into the city. I don't know what their plan for, is, for him is yet, but I'm assuming it has something to do with them trying to destroy the city. Probably going to use him at some point, but I don't know. I'm really looking forward to seeing where the story is going to go next and how it all is going to come to a head and how it's going to end. So 
Really looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this episode? Let me know what you talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future bathroom reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.